all the more the truth is being suppressed by a system that for whatever reason doesn't want you to know the truth, um, the more um, the truth will find another way to express itself. And I see that happening through these alternative media. And, and the, the established media is going through a huge crisis. I don't think it will survive that crisis um, because um, yeah, it no longer, in my opinion, serves serves the truth and serves humanity because whatever you do, I mean, that's that's basically the gist of it. Like, you, it should be in service. It should be. It should serve humanity. And if I feel that that's that's the genuine intention of somebody, I'm cool with whoever. But I'm quite sensitive to uh, those who claim to be in service and do the opposite. And that's the hypocrisy of the times that we live in. You know, I think. More even so than than saying that the people you mentioned, you know, Russell Brand, Joe Rogan, that they are truth seekers, I would say more than anything, they are just brave seekers in the sense that they're seeking. I think whether they always land at the truth or not is debatable. And I think that's not a problem because the no. point is as long as you remain open to discourse, open to investigation, open to dialogue, no matter what that's position it, yeah. the person takes. And I think that's what I can take away from from those two examples that you gave and, and others as well. It's if I look at myself and if I look at what could I recommend to somebody who would listen to what we're talking about now, it, it's it's not, hey, these are the guys that are telling the truth and those are the guys that are not. Because, no, because that is so malleable. It changes from topic to topic, moment to moment. In some things I'll agree with Russell Brand, in some things I won't. In some hitting. things I'll agree with Joe Rogan, in some things I won't. And it's it's the principle that lies behind it, which is openness to dialogue, to listen, to change, That's to it. adapt. And if that is there, you have the key ingredient to find that which is true at that moment because the truth is also an, an ever-changing thing, an evolving thing. The more you dig your heels in and you fixate yourself on an opinion, A, but B, even worse, a source of that opinion. So you say this source is always legitimate, that source is always illegitimate. That's what I like about both of them uh, as examples, and there are others, yeah. uh, that th that's what I perceive in them is that openness and they they can change their mind. They, that's the feeling you get. They're not. They don't come with a predisposition mm -hmm. idea. They they may have an opinion and they will articulate it quite openly. But they are. You you feel they are open. They are open minded. They are actually dialoguing, and like what we are doing right now. And you and I, we've had our differences, uh, and and that's that's okay. Like uh, if it's coupled with. An openness, which uh, I think yeah. we both hopefully have. You know. well, well, but that's exactly the point I'm, I'm, I want to touch on, which is the problem with with term conspiracy theories is that it's a pejorative. It's it's an mm -hmm. insulting thing. It's used mm -hmm. to denigrate, and what they're really doing is they're just painting things as as being black and white. And I look at it this way: it is true that there are people that see patterns where there aren't any. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Illusory perception is a thing. People look up in the sky, they see clouds, and they're like, oh, look, there's a cow. Ungroundedness. Right? Yeah, what, yeah it's ungroundedness, but it's, it's, it's just a tendency that humans mm -hmm. have demonstrated mm -hmm. over the history of humanity, right? And, the, mm -hmm. and our observation of our, of our psyche. So that's just going on. And I feel like just as much as there are people who see patterns too often and see patterns where they're not necessarily there. And there are reasons for that that I want to touch in, uh, upon as well. There are people also who refuse to see any patterns because it disturbs their peace of mind. Right. And so if you accept that both of these things are true, the, the terms conspiracy theorist, mainstream media, alternative media, all of this kind of stuff, it becomes a little childish because you're playing a game of, let me just characterize this person and their entire search by a derogatory term that mm -hmm. doesn't really encapsulate what's going on. But just because in that particular moment, there's a disagreement between myself and that person. And it just is the easy way out to just throw an insult and throw a, a very vague branching term. You are a conspiracy theorist. Okay, well, which conspiracy? There's hundreds, millions, thousands. What are we talking about? Landing on the moon? 
aliens, uh, you know, reptilians leading the world in all the major governments. Those are some that are very much hot topics. Flat Earth, or that you know the world is led and governed by people beyond the the spokespersons, the presidents, and whatever else that you see, you know, in front of the cameras. Um, that there are people trying to uh, affect and manipulate our, uh, let's say, economy, our education, our social political views behind the scenes. Uh, you know, those are, are, are much more, let's say, grounded, evidence-based, realistic propositions than some of the other ones that I mapped out earlier. If you just say you're a conspiracy theorist, you, you're, you're bundling them all together as if this is all just one thing. Yeah. I think in general, therefore, the takeaway is more precision, more nuance, less generalizations, less wanting to create almost like these, these polars of friend and enemy, us versus them, division, and more openness, willingness, bravery to confront yourself with many different ideas and many different perspectives in order to arrive at a truth that makes sense for you, the individual. So a little bit more independent thinking also.